Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about different disaster recovery strategies. So majorly there are four disaster recovery strategies, which is backup and restore, pilot light, warm standby, hot site, and multi site approach. So we will see the first one, which is backup and restore. So in the backup and restore, what an organization do? A organization uh, they will take backup of their data in a cloud or uh, uh yeah on premise but they take the backup of their data like uh, in s3 or they take a snapshot of their ebs volume uh redshift or any kind of uh, database and also uh, of their machine they take the emi like if they have the ec2 they take the uh, ami so yeah they just do the backup and when any disaster happens what they do they just uh, restore from that backup so they launch of spin off the new ec2 ec2 machines the database rds database or uh, yes uh, so this is what they do in the backup and restore it has the lowest rpo and uh, the slowest rtu so i have written this four strategy based on the rto uh, sequence so the bottom one has the fastest rto means it will take very less time to spin off everything and your application will be up and running in case of disaster the bottom one and the top one is the slowest so if the application is not very critical uh, organization they just do backup and restore a strategy so it's just taking the backup and restore when it's needed second one is pilot light so what is this strategy what is this method the pilot light what pilot light uh, strategy says that you have a corporate data center it can be a corporate or it can be a cloud depends on your infrastructure and taking example of corporate and the cloud so you have a corporate data data center and you have the data let's say in case of yeah and also you are taking backup to the rds you are taking backup in the rds rds this database is always up and running it could be any database i'm taking example rds it, it is up and running this ec2 is not running only the rds is running there is no ec2 machine so in case of disaster route 53 they will the uh, route 53 is a aws service we will talk this more about in aws lectures so this will do the failover uh, and uh, it uh, uh, just uh, spin off route 53 does not spin off but it will just route the traffic ec2 uh, ec2 is a machine it will spin off it will connect to rds database once everything is ready this will take some time uh, and how ec2 will be launched ec2 will be launched from the ami which we had so it launched from the ami and uh, once everything is ready application is up and running and uh, this uh, uh, ec2 is uh, uh, connected to the rds route 53 will traffic the uh, uh, redirect the traffic to the our ec2 machine so this is pilot light pilot light means whatever is very critical only that is running which is not very critical that is just uh, uh, not running a step it's uh, normal it's, it's not running so rds is always running and th this is the synchronization the database the corporate database is always synchronized with the rds and there are uh, some technologies how we do the uh, uh, the uh, sync we how we keep sync the uh, data center and rds like if we have a postgres sql so then we have some method we'll talk do, uh, we'll talk about those in later lectures the third strategy is warm standby so what is warm standby so warm standby what is uh, what uh, what it says in warm standby rds is up and running my ec2 is up and running so all the infrastructure in the cloud is up and running but but let's say my requirement is not 1 db my requirement is 4 db in the warm standby 1 db is running my requirement is not one ec2 machine but four or five ec2 machines so things are uh, the infrastructure is up and running but at the low capacity uh, not a full scale so this is a warm standby what will happen in case of disaster the auto load balancer and uh, uh, auto scaling group auto scaling group will increase the number of ec2 and they will uh, yeah and also spin off more rds instances so 
uh, this is this has some better RTU and RPU, but this is a bit expensive because uh, you have uh, infrastructure up and running. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, active passive approach. One side is active. L if this is a, a corporate data center, it is active. If it is a cloud in one region, this could be second region. So this is active and this is passive. The third approach, which is hot site multi site approach, is the most expensive one, but has the better RPU and the fastest RPU. Your application is up and running, spin off in very very less time. This way, the 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 above one, the warm standby, it could take some more time because the auto load balance, auto scaling group will take time to launch everything up. In the hot site multi uh, hot site multi site approach, let's say this is one region, one region or on premise. This is another AWS region, region two. This is region one. So region one has some disaster, has some problem. Region 2 has all the infrastructure up and running, database is synchronized and it will take very less time. What, what you need to do, just route the traffic to another region, that's it. And it's, it's already, everything is up and running, there is no need to provision more resources, there is a, no need to do more repli uh, do replication, it's already, data is replicated. So it will, the RTU and RPO would be in minutes and seconds, so it is very, very fast. Uh, but it's expensive, the most expensive one. So this is the last one, hot site, multi-site approach. So very critical application, find like banking, financial data, for card provisioning, for transactions. People use this, the last approach, hot site, hot site multi-site approach. So these are the four disaster recovery strategies. And we will talk about the AWS services in detail in the other next lectures. So thank you.